The Bible even says in Luke chapter 8, verse 17, For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Well, the secret is over, and it's time for the flat earth truth to manifest itself. So let's get started with the 40 Bible verses. Bible verse number one. Fear before him, all the earth. The world also shall be stable, that it will be not moved. So the key point is there, the earth does not move. Bible verse number two. The Lord reigneth. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength. Wherewith he hath girded himself. The world also is established, that it cannot be moved. Bible verse number three. Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth. The world also shall be established, that it shall not be moved. The Bible is very clear that the earth is established and does not move. Science tells us that the earth spins at a thousand miles per hour. Now be honest with yourself. Can you feel it spin at a thousand miles per hour like science tells us? I don't think so. I've never felt or seen any signs of it spinning. Never. Bible verse number four. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretches out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. This verse here has been misunderstood by many Christians, including me. I used to say, see, it says circle, so we must live on a globe. There is a big difference between a circle and a ball. In fact, Isaiah knew the difference because of what he said in Isaiah chapter 22, verse 18. He will surely violently turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. Why didn't Isaiah use the word ball to describe the earth in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 22? Because he knew we didn't live on a ball, but we live on a flat circle. Bible verse number five. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? So the key there is foundations of the earth. Bible verse number six. Mine hand also has laid the foundation of the earth. Bible verse number seven. Who laid the foundations of the earth, that it should not be removed forever? We all know that when you build a strong foundation, it doesn't move. It stays in place for a very long time. Yet science wants us to believe that the earth is spinning at a thousand miles per hour, and then the earth is rotating around the sun at 67,000 miles per hour. I don't think so. God made this earth flat with foundations so that it doesn't move. A spinning globe has no foundations. Bible verse number eight. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. So the key here is footstool. Bible verse number nine. Nor by the earth, for it is his footstool. Bible verse number 10. Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. A footstool has a flat top and foundations or pillars to hold it up. I don't see anywhere on the globe earth model that shows that it has a footstool. I don't think so. Verse number 11. He raises up the poor out of the dust and lifts up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he has set the world upon them. So the key here is pillars of the earth. Verse number 12 which shaketh the earth out of her place, and the pillars therefore tremble. Verse number 13. The earth and all the inhabitants thereof are dissolved. I bear up the pillars of it. Pillars are fixed in place, just like a foundation. If God says the earth has pillars, then it is not a spinning globe like science tells us. So you can see that the Bible is very clear, that the earth is immovable, has a foundation that does not move and is fixed on pillars that also do not move. There is no room for a spinning ball theory when it comes to the Bible. Now, let's move on to the dome firmament and what that means. The definition of firmament is 
the vault or arch of the sky, stars twinkled in the firmament. Let's look at Bible verse number 14. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. See in this picture, this is the ancient Hebrew conception of the universe. There is the arch of the firmament, the dome so to speak. There is the waters above and the waters below. And the earth is placed on its foundations. Verse number 15. Praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. This verse confirms what it says in Genesis chapter 1 verse 7, that there are waters above the firmament. Next verse, number 16. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Verse number 17. Has thou with him spread out the sky, which is strong, and as a molten looking glass? This verse is very powerful. God says the sky is strong like molten glass. But what does molten glass look like? Here are a few molten glass bowls. Now, let's turn these upside down and see what they look like. They look just like a dome that contains the flat earth. Do you see the similarity to this flat earth model with a dome over it? I sure can. And let's not forget what it says in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 22 about the heavens being just like a tent. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretches out the heavens as a curtain, and spreads them out as a tent to dwell in. This is a round tent. This is a round dome flat earth. Do you see the similarities? Isaiah sure did. Now, let's talk about the stars in the firmament. Here is a picture showing the waters above the firmament and the stars, sun, and moon within the firmament. So the important thing to remember is that the stars, sun, and moon are inside the firmament. Bible verse number 18. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days and years and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two greats, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. So there is no doubt that God placed the stars, sun and moon inside the firmament. Bible verse number 19. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth. The key point here is, it says the stars fell unto the earth. Science tells us that the stars are millions and even billions of miles away. What a joke. So how will the stars fall to earth? Impossible, unless all the stars were directly above us. And this is only possible on a flat dome earth where the stars are right above us inside the firmament. Verse number 20. And it waxed great, even to the host of heaven, and it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground. Again, it states that the stars were cast to the ground. Verse number 21. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven. Verse 22 And the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. Both of these verses state that the stars shall fall from heaven. This supports the flat earth dome model of heaven being directly above us and the stars embedded in the firmament falling to earth. Now, let's talk about the four corners of the earth or the ends of the earth. Here is a picture of how I imagine God might have created the earth. 
I can hear the critics now. Wait a second, that's not a circular flat earth. It's a square, not a circle. Look, I don't claim to know all the facts, but I do know that the Illuminati are hiding a very big secret down in the Antarctic. Why else did they create the Antarctic Treaty of 1959, in which 53 countries signed this treaty that basically made it into a military zone where the public can't go explore? I mean, come on, it's just a bunch of ice with little to no life down there. So what are they hiding? They don't want us to explore the Antarctic because then we would find out the truth, that the edge of the flat earth dome is located there and they don't want us to see it. This is a huge topic that I will discuss in an upcoming video. Just know this, there is something very strange going on down there that the Illuminati have been hiding from the public for over 50 years. Do some research on your own. But what I do know is that a round globe does not have corners or ends to it. Let's see what the Bible has to say. Bible verse number 23. After these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor the sea, nor on any tree. Verse number 24. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Verse number 25. O Lord, my strength and my fortress, and my refuge in the day of affliction, the Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth. Verse number 26. He directeth it under the whole heaven, and is lightning unto the ends of the earth. Verse number 27, Who has ascended up into heaven, or descended? Who has gathered the wind in his fist? Who has bound the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? So these verses describe the ends of the earth and the four corners of the earth. This would be impossible on a round globe earth. And now, let's talk about the four winds of the earth. This fact is amazing. Did you know that the Earth has four main jet streams? They are called the polar jets and the subtropical jets. This is what it says straight from Wikipedia. The northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere each have a polar jet and a subtropical jet. That comes to a total of four winds of the Earth, just like the Bible states. Here's a picture of what that would look like on the fake globe Earth given to us by science. And here's a picture of what it really looks like on a flat earth given to us by God Almighty. Let's see what the Bible says about the four winds. Verse number 28. And upon Elam will I bring the four winds from the four quarters of heaven. Verse 29. Daniel spoke and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. Verse number 30, And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Let's look at Revelation chapter 7 verse 1 again, but this time with the picture that describes it perfectly. And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the winds should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Okay, now let's talk about the sun and its movement in the Bible. Did you know that there is not one single reference to the earth moving around the sun in the Bible, like science tells us? Yet, there are many references to the sun rising, setting, and even standing still. Let's see what the Bible says. Verse number 31. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zor. It's the sun that is moving and rising not the earth. Verse number 32. The sun also arises, and the sun goes down, and hasteth to his place where he arose. It is the sun that moves when it rises, moves when it sets, and goes back to its original position. Verse number 33. He appointed the moon for seasons, the sun knows his going down. It says the sun knows it's going down. Why didn't God say the earth knows it's going down? 
because the earth is not moving. Next, verse number 34. Thy sun shall no more go down, neither shall the moon withdraw itself. The sun shall no more go down, which implies that it was moving. Verse number 35. Which commandeth the sun, and it rises not. Again, the sun did not rise, which implies that it was moving. Verse 36. Then spoke Joseph to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Sun, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still, and in the midst of heaven, and hast did not go down about a whole day. Wait a second, what's going on here? Why did Joshua command the sun and moon to stand still if they are not moving to begin with? Oh, I know the answer. Science is wrong and God is right. Joshua commanded the sun and moon to stand still because they are the ones moving, not the earth. Verse number 37. The sun and moon stood still in their habitation. Here again, the sun and moon stood still, which means that they were moving and now they aren't. Verse number 38. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoices as a strong man to run a race. His going forth, and we're talking about the sun here, his going forth is from the end of the heavens, and his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. These verses describe the sun going forth, or moving, on a circuit, or a track, unto the ends of the heaven. I believe that God created the sun to move around this flat earth on a set track, or on a set pattern. It sure makes a lot more sense than the earth hurling around the sun at 67,000 miles per hour. Let's look at the last two verses. Verse number 39. Again, the devil taketh him up, meaning Jesus, into an exceedingly high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Someone please explain to me how they were able to see all the kingdoms of the earth from a high mountain. This is impossible on a globe earth. The only way that they were able to see all the kingdoms of the earth is on a flat earth. And last but not least, Bible verse number 40. The tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached unto heaven, and the sight thereof to the end of all the earth. Once again, someone please explain to me how this works. This is impossible on a globe Earth. First off, there are no ends on a globe. And second, you wouldn't be able to see the bottom of the globe from the top of the tree. It is only possible to see the whole Earth from the top of the tree if we lived on a flat dome Earth like we really do. So there you have it. 40 Bible verses that show we live on a flat dome type Earth. The earth is immovable, it has foundations, it has pillars, it has corners, and it has a firmament. And the sun, moon, and stars are moving inside the firmament, and the earth is stationary. God is very clear about this. So everyone, please take a deep breath, and don't let this information overwhelm you. I have been what's called a truther for about nine years now, and I just learned about this a year ago. I am 49 years old, and for 48 years I was deceived by Lucifer to believe in the spinning ball earth model. I already knew about the Luciferian Illuminati agenda, and yet I was still deceived. I can't believe I let this slip past me for so long. Oh well, that just shows you how powerful brainwashing can be. So. If you are a Christian, then I expect you to believe 100% that we live on a flat earth. Why? Because the Bible says so. So the big question is, why? Why is this important? Why should I even care about this topic? Why should I research it further? 
and why should the whole world know the truth about this topic? Here's the answer. Are you ready? Why do they lie about the shape of the Earth? Without the globe model, the Big Bang model wouldn't be considered. Without the Big Bang model, the theory of evolution wouldn't be on the table. Without the theory of evolution, extraterrestrial seeding mankind is over. So that means ancient aliens, all these alien movies, that's all a lie. Without all these lies, people start thinking about the Creator, who we are, where we came from. They're hiding God. You live on a plane, not a planet. If people would wake up to the truth that we live on a flat earth and not a spinning ball, then all eyes will look up to the Creator, to God, the intelligent designer who created everything. There would be no more evolutionists. There would be no more atheists. Agnostics would have to reconsider their beliefs if they knew they lived on a flat earth made by God. So that's why it's important. And as a Christian, one of our main goals in life is to direct people to Jesus Christ. I believe that nothing in this world would turn people to God faster than people learning the truth about the flat earth. Let me say that again because this is so vital to understand. Nothing in this world would turn people to God faster than people learning the truth about the flat earth. The spinning earth model is Lucifer's biggest deception of all time. So let me conclude by saying this. This is Satan's globe earth lie. The Big Bang and evolution explain life. You were an accident. We evolved from primordial soup. We are just specks in the universe. Some people are more valuable than others. And this is the foundation for the new world order. You are worthless. Now let's look at the flip side of that. God's flat earth. Creation is the only explanation. We are incredibly valuable. The Bible is 100% true, and we just saw 40 Bible verses that prove that. We live on an unmoving, firm foundation. You were created by God, and God loves you. So thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and please share this video with your friends and family to help spread the truth of Jesus Christ. Also, stay tuned for my next mind-opening video that will set you free. God bless and I will see you next time.